Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about entering times into your database that are durations in hours and minutes, and they may exceed 24 hours. These are not valid date time field objects. You can't put a value in your Access database that is 104 hours, 16 minutes, for example. Let's take a look at the question. This question comes from Jeff. He says, I am an aircraft mechanic and I have to cope with bunches of Excel forms to make records of aircraft daily flights, monitor conditions of each critical part, arrange the upcoming inspections on aircraft, report historical records of flights, and so on. All I've been used to is just Excel and Word, but the files are so many and it was hard to manage them in orderly and safely. Of course, that's one of the reasons why you want to use Access because those Excel files can definitely add up or sheets in one Excel file. Then last week, I watched your Access video. It was awesome. Thank you very much. An Access database can definitely make my work more efficient. Of course it can. Now I'm thinking of building up an Access database for my daily job. First step, I have to construct tables. For example, flight hours, aircraft total time should be input into the field. But I found that hours colon minutes, fix your spelling there, cannot be input. For there is no appropriate type setting for this field. Number and date time cannot do this job. Of course not. Short text can make the input, but cannot be calculated, and that's another problem. What should I do for these values? How to make the flight time, such as hours, colon, minutes, be input into the fundamental tables? Your advice is really appreciated. Thanks for your time, and best regards, Jeff. Okay, you've hit the nail on the head there, Jeff. That right there, 3,456 hours, 50 minutes, is not valid for a date time field and of course you can't put a number in like that you could put it in as a number of hours and then a fraction of minutes but then you got to do a division in your head for example you can enter a short text value such as six hours 28 minutes but again if you get over 24 hours you're going to get an error the problem is that access stores dates and times internally as a number and I go over exactly how that number is calculated in my Access Beginner classes. But essentially, there is no data type that will calculate hours and minutes like this as a duration of time that can exceed 24 hours. And then you start getting into it becoming days. So how do you handle this if that's how you want to input your data? Okay, essentially, there are two ways to handle this situation. One is to use a separate field for hours and minutes. This is my recommended method. If you can retrain yourself and your staff to enter in hours and then hit tab and then minutes, I recommend using two fields. So let's take a look at method one here. Let's design a table. All right, ID, auto number. Let's call it flight hours. That'll be a number of type long integer. And then flight minutes. That'll be also a number of type long integer. Save it. We'll call this my flight one table. All right, primary key, sure. And then let's put some data in here. All right, flight hours, 67 hours, 13 minutes. And if, the, if you can do that for your data entry, then this is the easiest solution. All right, flight hours, eight, three minutes. And you can you can format this to show two digits here if you want to, that's, that's an easy format. Just go into the design view Go into flight minutes here, and for format, put in zero, zero. You don't necessarily want to do that for hours, because you might get six hours, and you just want to see the six. All right, but for minutes, it's always going to be like that. And also for minutes, while we're in here, you can also say that minutes has to have a validation rule, where it has to be between zero and 60. You don't want someone typing in 64 minutes. That should be another hour, right? So you can control that here. you got a lot more control... If you do it this way, and I just got a, I saved it, I got a warning about the, the data integrity might have changed because of the validation rule here, but nothing in the table so far violates that rule, so we're good. So now if I try to come in here and put in 120 hours and 90 minutes, I get yelled at. It says between 0 and 60. And you can put your own custom validation message in there if you want to. All right, so now we've got some sample data in here. Okay. To do calculations on this data now is very simple. If you want to calculate the total minutes or the total hours, you can you can easily do that in a query. Create, query design, bring in your table. All right, bring in all the fields. 
if you want. And you can do this in a form too. You don't have to use a query, although I do recommend using a query. Okay, you could say my total minutes, right, is going to be equal to what? The flight hours times 60 plus the flight minutes, just like that. See, now I got total minutes over here and you can use that for your calculations. If you want to represent that as hours instead of minutes, you can come over here and say total hours is going to be what? Um, let's just uh, divide up the minutes, right? Let's go uh, total minutes divided by 60. That's your total hours. See? If you want to round that number, you can certainly round it, right? Round that big number, comma, two decimal places, let's say. There you go. There's your total hours if you are happy entering in that information. So this is my recommendation. This is how I would suggest to it. Now, what if your people are stubborn and they don't want to get away from the HH colon NN format? Or you've got a bunch of data that you have to import from Excel for your legacy records and you want to convert that over to this. How do you go about doing that? Well, that's, that's condition number two. Let's save this real quick. Flight uh, 1Q. Okay. Let's make another table and I'll show you the other way to do it. Create, table design. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting used to a new mouse here, so my hand might seem a little <laughs> jumpy. All right, again, an ID. Now, this time, the flight time is going to be entered in as short text. All right, we got to put it in as text. Can't put it in as a date time, can't put it in as a number, because we're putting a colon in the middle of it. All right, save this, flight 2T. Primary key defined there, okay. Now, let's put our flight times in here. So, one hour, uh, 18 minutes. And, and you don't have as much control here. You can't easily prevent someone from typing in one hour, 65 minutes. So that's, again, why I recommend the other way. All right. 135 hours, seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, that'll be valid because once we do our little trick to get them to pull the minutes out, it'll still work. 69 hours and no minutes. 115 hours and 13 minutes. Okay, now we have to split this apart using text functions. Then we can convert those text values into numbers. All right, and we have to do that in a query. Again, you can do it straight in a form. I recommend a query. Create, query design, pull in flight 2T. All right, the first thing we have to do is figure out where in that string the colon is. That's what deline delineates between the hours and the minutes. So I'm going to call it colon position, col pose, colon. All right, where is it? Use the in string function in flight time, comma, look for the colon. That. I know sometimes people yell at me when I don't zoom in so they can see that better. My video recording software doesn't easily allow me to zoom in and out without changing the, the dimensions of the window and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I need better software, but I've been using this software since uh, it's, it's hypercam. I've been using it since I think 2004 and it's a really good software. I love it, but it's not easy to zoom in and out. So I'm going to just pop it up on notepad for you so you can see what I'm doing. Call position is the in string of flight time comma that little colon there. All right. And if I run that now, you can see I get a number that represents the position inside that string where that colon is located. And I cover a lot of these functions in other videos. In string, you're going to see left and right in a minute. All right, I've got tons of other videos that cover this stuff, including my full classes. All right, so now we know where the colon is. Now I can use the left and right functions to pull out the hours and minutes. So flight hours is going to be the left of flight time, comma, where is that colon? So col pose. And then I have to subtract one because I don't want the colon itself. All right, run it now. There we go. There's the flight hours. It finds the colon and takes the left X number of characters. See, here's four is where that colon is in position four right there. So give me the left three characters. That's how that works. And then so I can do calculations. I want to convert this over to a long integer. CLNG, convert to long, that whole thing. Now it's a number. And you can tell because look, now it lines up on the right side of the field there. So this is a number I can now add and subtract and multiply and do funny things with. All right, let's get the minutes. Minutes are a little harder because I got to come in from the right side. 
All right, so flight minutes is going to be, uh, where is it here? The right of flight time, comma, the length of flight time minus the calling position. All right, so in other words, take the right number of characters, how many? Take the total length of the string and subtract the colon pose. So if the whole thing is 10 and the colon's at three, I want seven characters. And again, we'll take this whole thing, CLNG it, so we can now do math on it. And there we go. Now I've got flight hours and flight minutes in two separate fields. But again, you know, this, dump, this value here, if someone types in a value without a colon, you're gonna get errors in here, see? So it's up to you which way you wanna do it. And of course, you can put all kinds of controls on this. And if you, if you know VBA, you can, you know, you can take a look at this value after it's entered to make sure it's valid. But now you can use the other techniques that I showed you to get the total minutes and the total hours if you want, using these two values here. So I'll save this as my flight to Q. Ah, flight to Q. There we go. And there, just so you have it, you got a nice view of the different functions there. Flight hours and flight minutes. That's how you, that's how you do it. I cover all of these functions in my complete lessons, and I've got some other tip videos on my website and on YouTube on how to use these things. Uh, I will put links in the description below the video to take you to different videos that teach you things like see long and left and right and all that. We can actually just go into the flight one and grab these guys, total minutes and total hours, copy that, slide over here, paste these in, and now total minutes will be Flight hours times 60, flight minutes. Yep, okay. So those those functions will should work just as is. There we go, perfect. Just copy them right off the other one. Total minutes, total hours. All right. Here, I'll put those in the notepad for you too so you can get a copy of those. Copy that. Paste it over here. Let's grab hours. I'll paste that in there for you too so you can see what they are. There you go. Pause the video because I'm I'm moving on. <laughs> I will drop a copy of this video on my website or uh, of this database on my website too. I'll put a link in the bottom. You can come and grab it if you want. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notifications when I release new videos. If you're watching on my website, make sure you subscribe to my Microsoft Access Forum. And you'll also get notifications when I post new videos. Want to see your question answered? Well, send it to me. The best way is on my tech help page. Now time for some shameless advertising. If you like this video, make sure you watch my free Access Level 1 class. There it is right there. It's both on YouTube and on my website. And that's the one that Jeff was referring to in his question earlier. It's a full three-hour long tutorial that teaches you all the basics of Access. And even if you've been using Access for a little while, there's a lot of good fundamental information in there that even some, some veteran users of Access don't know. If you like level one, you can get level two for just one dollar. And there's the link. Okay, folks, hope you learned something. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.